Welcome everybody to the Fusion Power podcast. I am your host, Jared Gillespie, CSO here at Fusion Power. Today we continue our series with SRP Pro Solar candidates for the SRP election coming up here in April. Today we have Mrs. Casey Klaus on the program and we're excited to talk to Casey about her thoughts on the election and what she hopes to get accomplished as a candidate. Casey, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me. This you, is exciting. You betcha. So just a, a little background for our viewers. So Casey, you currently work as the Voting Rights Director at Progress Arizona. Yes, I do. Um, collaborate with nonprofit organizations, labor unions, and other community members to fight pro-voter and pro-democracy policies at the state legislator. And then it, um, also you are an attorney by trade, I understand. Yes, I am. So uh Right now, uh, working at the state legislature, there are a variety of, you know, anti-democracy bills um, that we're fighting. So working with groups who understand that uh, voting rights is important for all organizations. So that includes, you know, climate groups like the Sierra Club and groups whose sole priority is voting rights. Gotcha. And you've been a passionate environmentalist, it sounds like. What, uh, what, what, how long you been interested in the environment? What gets you, what's got you so in, uh, passionate about this, about this cause? Ooh, I have been, you know, interested in climate, climate justice, uh, probably as long as I can remember, certainly as long as my mom, uh, can remember. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, it is incredibly important that we address the issues that we have so that we can continue to you know, lead healthy lives. Um, everyone just wants to spend more time with their loved ones. Um, and that'll be more difficult if we don't have a livable planet um, or if people, you know, are experiencing too much air pollution to go outside and go to the park with their friends uh, or if it's too hot to go outside. Um, so I think just making sure people can do the things that they want to do. Sure, you know? sure. So tell me why are you running for the SRP board? Yeah. So we live in the Valley of the Sun, uh, but you wouldn't know it based on SRP's uh, current power uh, makeup. Right now, their generation of solar only accounts for 3.4% of their total generation. Um, and that I think that that is unacceptable. Uh, when I was in law school, I took an energy law class, and they were talking about the highest, uh, highest solar generation per capita of the different states in New Jersey at the time. Uh, was number one, New Jersey, a rainy state, sure. a, yeah. you know, not necessarily uh, the best location, um, but they had put in pro-solar policies. And really, it's a policy choice that we don't have more solar here. Um, the end of net metering has really trampled on rooftop solar for folks. Um, it, and we can change that if we take over. Which is huge, right? The idea of being able to possibly bring back net metering. I mean, that change, when, when SRP 10 years ago got rid of net metering and brought in demand charges, you saw how it influenced Nevada with NV Energy. You saw what it did to APS uh, and what, what it's even done over in California. The cool idea here is that if we can change that, if we can get a, a pro solar board elected, I mean, what's the possibilities at that point? Yeah, I mean, you look at customers who have the pre, you know, 2015 um, energy. So my parents have solar on their house, uh, got in, you know, a year before. Um, and their electricity bill is often $0. Um, and so for them, it works great. You know, it actually makes economic sense for them. Uh, and if right now with demand charges, it doesn't make, you know, dollars and cents for folks uh, for them to do it uh, so well, really and, and the hard part, sorry to cut you off, the, the, the hard part about demand charges too is that it's very hard to predict and control, right? And, and, and to be able to tell a customer like, you're going to either get charged 50 bucks in demand charges or 100 based on you using the microwave for this five minute period that you don't exactly know when or how that works. I mean, that can, it's a pretty significant uh, 
you know, it, it makes it, your savings probability very, very precocious. Right. And why would you take a bet on something that may or may not right. uh, work out for you and probably won't work out for you? You know, if you're a family who can't put that much solar on, um, the charges have made it just not work out for as many people as it should. For sure. Um, so making sure that we can get more people to have rooftop solar um, and then expanding also into community solar and uh, utility scale solar. Which is awesome. And I, I kind of want to ask a little bit more about SRP. What do you think SRP ought to be focused on when it comes to renewable products? Like rooftop solar is huge. That's what we promote, right? That's our business. What are some of the other things that you think SRP ought to be doing to further both rooftop solar and just renewables in general? Yeah. Uh, so SRP is a public utility, but when I say public-private, I mean sort of more uh, traditional public of like schools. So SRP could put you, you know, solar on schools, put solar on school. Uh, I've seen some in Tucson on over school playgrounds. Um, so making sure that kids are able to get out, it's not as hot, yeah. the equipment's not too hot, you're not going to burn yourself. Uh, and so they're generating solar there uh, and helping the community. So I think looking for ways that we can collaborate uh, and be really a leader in our community um, would be important to me. So here's a hard question, and this is me playing advocate, I guess, for SRP. <laughs> how do we push solar, right? How do we get, how do we allow people to have residential solar and take all the benefits, and at the same time still have enough revenue coming in to maintain the grid? Because it is expensive to do. What what do I need to if I'm SRP and I'm still trying to maintain my costs? Like how do I how do I do that if I at the same time I'm trying to push you know renewables and green energy? Yeah, so you look right now, uh, they are looking to build a gas plant. Uh, we know that gas plants are used primarily for peaker uh, plants. They are easy to turn on, turn off. Um, unlike, you know, nuclear, it's on all the time. It's mm -hmm. very expensive to ramp down. Um, and so they're looking for that really to solve the need of peak power. Um, that peak demand is often, you know, that four to six time. Folks are getting home. They're running their dishwasher. They're making dinner. Um, and that's also when solar is at its highest. And so we can really look at, you know, solar as an alternative to that peaker plant uh, that we, you know, is going to pollute uh, the community where it's located um, and doesn't have the same benefits for the individuals, uh, for our community, for the healthy skies. <laughs> well, and, and from a bottom line standpoint, too, how I don't know if you know the number, like how many millions of dollars is it going to cost to build that thing, whereas they could just have residents, their, their own people pay for their own solar systems and just take advantage of all the energy that's being produced. Yeah. Like the cost benefit there is just crazy. I, it, it makes zero sense you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend that kind of money on infrastructure when people are more than willing to do it. I mean, I can only imagine why they want to do it is uh, they have guaranteed rate of return on everything they spend. And so if they are paying for the gas plant, they're going to get their three, their 5% back. Um, but we're a public utility. We should serve the public. We shouldn't be thinking about, you know, a bottom line like a regular business might. So would a new board be able to put the brakes on that project and have it reroute into either incentives for residential solar or, or other? W would that be a possibility? I do believe that that would be a possibility. It's been hung up in litigation, um, so it's on pause at the moment. Um, and I think that, you know, we can help folks who were going to be working on that plant uh, to retrain, get folks ready to install solar um, and dispatch that throughout the community. Gotcha. Now, um, you're running for an at-large seat. Can you tell us what, what does that actually mean? And then who's allowed to vote for you in an at-large seat? What is that? How does that work? The at-large uh, representatives, there are four of them. They represent all 10 districts. Um, unlike the district seats that have acreage-based voting, um, anyone or in the at-large seats, they're all just one person, one vote. Um, now, it's not that simple because you still have to be a landowner in the SRP district, um, which, you know, is wholly unfair uh, since 49% of ratepayers are renters or can't vote um, in the election. But in that large seat, one person, one vote. So if normally in your acreage-based voting, uh, say you and your uh, spouse own your home together, 
if one of you turns in your ballot, that's the same as both of you turning in your ballot mm -hmm. for a district candidate because they're going to split your acreage. But for the at-large seats, anyone on the deed gets one person, one vote. And so you should both request ballots uh, and both turn in because that will help us get those at-large seats that we need to flip the board. So to kind of explain that, um, if you didn't watch last week, basically the way that you vote in SRP is you have to own, you have to live in a certain area and you have to be a landowner to qualify to vote. The problem is, is only half of the area that SRP actually services qualifies to vote and your vote is proportional to the amount of acres within that land that you actually own. So if I'm a farmer and I own 5,000 acres, my vote is worth 5,000 votes as opposed to one person who owns one acre and makes their vote. And so when we talk about an at-large vote, this allows a one-for-one -one voting, which makes it much more proportional, proportional and fair. Um, so the constituents there are going to be able to have a bigger weight in that uh, in that election. Is that kind of a good summary for that? Definitely. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people are turned off by the election. You know, I live in a condo, so my vote, you know, my acreage is this big. Um, and so they think, well, you know, why would I vote anyway? Like, I can't have a big say compared to the farmers um, or folks who own a ton of land. And so my urge for them is if you think that your vote, you know, doesn't count for the district, it still does. You know, all those little condos add up, uh, but also that you get a full vote, the same vote as that, you know, 5,000 acre landowner. Uh, in the at-large races. Which is huge. That's super important. So how do people go about voting in this in this election? I, I, I last time I tried to register, I found out I'm not in the, I don't live in the right place to be able to vote, but I didn't even, most people don't even know about it. I was talking to my dad. I'm like, hey dad, are you voting in the SRP election? He's like, what do you mean they have elections? Like most people don't even know that. So how do we make sure, or how do we, how do people go about actually voting for SRP? Yeah, so first you have to register, and it's separate from your voter registration that you would do with the Secretary of State. Um, so you can do it online at SRP's website. Um, do you know where on the website to go? Because they don't make it very easily find. Uh, you can't search it. They do not make it easy. Um, I will get we'll back We'll put to it up on yeah. the screen here. We'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> um, I know it's, you know. But it's buried, though. It is. Yeah. They, I mean, they make it difficult on purpose because it protects the people who are currently in power who serve a lot of fossil fuel interests at the moment. Um, so you have to first register. Uh, when you register, you can sign up for the active early voting list. I would ask everyone to do that. It means you're going to always get a ballot mailed to you. Um, unless you move, you know, you'll be able to vote. Uh, and then you'll send it back or you can vote in person. So you can also register and then go to the SRP office on mail uh, and vote there. But you know, that's not convenient for everyone. I live over there in Tempe, but I would definitely say voting by mail is gonna be the easiest choice Just send for it folks. In. So who do we need to be voting for? So number one, make sure that people know that they can vote and that they register, they get their ballots, but we need to make sure they vote for the right people. Who are the candidates? Who are the pro solar candidates that we need to be looking, whose names do we need to be looking for? Yeah, so our besides you, right, Casey Klaus, <laughs> make sure that you vote for Casey if 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 you're in an at-large area. Yeah, um, so anyone in the district can vote for myself and Sandra Kennedy. We're running for the at-large seats uh, 11 and 13. Vote for both of us, um, and then our district candidates. Uh, we have Lauren QB in District Five, Nick Brown in District Seven, and Anna uh, Moore Alameda in District Nine. Okay. Yeah. So. How many candidates do we need to get elected to be able to get the pro solar majority? Yeah, uh, so we need five of us to win. So this is going to be a big race, a uh, big uphall, up, uphill battle. Um, so we need folks to support, call your friends, call your neighbors, tell them to register, get a ballot, um, and tell them who the pro solar candidates are. The thing that I love about this, though, is that because nobody knows about SRP voting, we should be able to tip the election fairly easily. Uh, last time, from what I understand, there was only about 2% of, of possible voters that actually voted. So we didn't get to 10% and have them all vote for the candidates that we support. All of a sudden, you know, we, we get exactly what we want. So it's just a matter of making sure that everybody knows. All right, so Casey, what are the dates that we need to be aware of? What's our timeline and our deadline here? Yeah, so you have until March 22nd to request your ballot. Uh, ballots will first go out on the 6th, so if you request it before then, um, you're going to get it faster. And then the uh, you'll need to mail them back by the 28th because they need to be there before Election Day. Election Day is April 2nd. Gotcha. Okay. 
So we have those dates up on the screen. Make sure that you follow those as you talk to people. So um, how do we make sure that you get elected? What needs to happen? Yeah, uh, I need folks to go tell all of your friends. Um, call your neighbors, call your parents, request your ballot, make sure they request your ballot, their ballots, um, and tell them who the pro-solar candidates are. Um, you know, put a calendar reminder right now uh, in your phone for the election uh, so that you remember to get your ballot in. Um, 2% turnout is, I mean, in most elections would be wildly low. Um, so it really does mean that just a little bit more um, we can make a huge difference and we can have a pro-solar majority on the SRP board for the first time. I mean, you know, I go out on the weekends knocking doors, but hundreds of people would really change the whole, uh, the whole election. And I think we'll have the impact that we need to make our pro-solar dreams possible. We're super excited about it. And I don't think, like you said, I don't think that we've ever seen an opportunity like this in the past. Um, we're excited to be part of it. I, I'm glad that you're running and that you're you're being a figurehead for everybody that believes in solar and and in, in residential solar, especially in uh, in this jurisdiction where it's been pretty rough for the last decade. It's time for some change, and we appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Do you have a call to action? You can look into this camera over here. Is there anything that you want to say to anybody watching this? Yeah. Um, so head over to srpcleanenergy.org. Uh, you'll see the links to request your ballot. You'll also see the bios of all of our pro solar candidates. Um, and then there's a volunteer form. So go up in the right hand corner, fill it out. Uh, if you want to come knock doors with me, with any of the candidates, uh, we will get you the information you need uh, to go do that and uh, join us on our team. Casey, thank you for being here today. We appreciate everybody joining us on the Fusion Power podcast. We will see you next time. Have a great day.